Hello everybody, my name and this is Ron's Guys Talk for Wednesday 5th of April 2023. New month and probably a new episode today and we've got plenty of things to talk about as always. OnePlus has dropped a new phone, uh, Asus has a new gaming handheld and Sony could be working on its own gaming handheld. Spoiler alert, it's not the success of the PS Vita as you hoped. Plus we got more uh, details about the Z Fold 5 and Flip 5. Uh, including the hour display of the Z Flip 5 that we're going to talk a little bit in detail later on. So without further ado, let's get rolling, shall we? Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the OnePlus uh, Nord CE3 Lite. Now that's a mouthful to start with, but basically it is OnePlus's most affordable smartphone that they do offer in their lineup at the moment. You have the Nord lineup itself, the CE the main Nord phones itself. There are so many of them now in the past couple of years, so I've kind of lost track of what uh, Nord is exactly right for what consumer or what user uh, primarily. But they have ma ma released a lot of OnePlus Nord phones to target a larger uh, audio parts of the smartphone market. And you have the main OnePlus series of phones, the 11, 11R, and then you have the Nord uh, lineup on the other hand. The Nord CE3 Lite is their newest affordable phone, let's just say that. Um, it comes with a whole bunch of uh, upgrades to start with. It's very fairly simple. We talked about it last week on last week's episode because they um, mentioned it uh, in a landing page uh, for the product. But uh, in case you missed it or you didn't listen to last week's episode, uh, here goes. You get a 6.72 inch uh, FHD plus display, um, 120 hertz refresh rate on it, so that's one decent upgrade. Another one is a triple camera setup at the back, 108 megapixel main sensor. 2 megapixel depth and 2 megapixel macro. Um, now this is obviously a bit different from the last uh, Nord CE2 in that um, you had a slightly low res camera and um, now you only have depth and macro sensors. So it might be a upgrade for some and a downgrade for most. So that's something to take into consideration. And other than that, uh, the display and camera have been real upgrade. You get a 5000 mAh battery with 67 watt fast charging so you uh, can get um, so as I said, you can get a much faster charge in no time. Uh, you can still have a headphone jack over here and a volume booster. And of course, you can even get virtual RAM, which is a feature on this phone that you won't get on others. But yeah, uh, you like the CE2 Lite, you still get the Snapdragon 695 5G, a robust chip in some ways, and then 8 gigabytes of RAM and 120 Eight gigabytes of storage. So that's pretty interesting in a way. Basically, if you look at it, um, if you look at it in a way, the CE3 Lite has essentially a better display and camera setup. Uh, though the cameras, though, I'd say that the main sensor is pretty would be decent. Again, I've not played around this phone, so I can't tell you how good it is, but it looks pretty, uh, it looks decent, 108 megapixels, but the depth and macro sensor is extremely useless. I don't know why they have to have put that in. At this point, you might as well just have a simple dual camera setup that did the job and gave people what they were looking for. Instead of a depth and a macro sensor separate, you could just offer a, uh, a macro telephoto a lens uh, camera as a secondary sensor that did zoom and also did your telephoto in one go instead of having two extra useless sensors so that's I think that's the biggest downside if you ask me but other than that it's more more or less it's a it's an incremental upgrade that is so pretty cool but yeah at this point there are lots of other options in the market there's the Oppos there's the Vivos they're, they offer much better value for money in that department if you ask me but yeah, uh, it's a decent phone. And if you're wondering about price now, it starts at £300 or $371 and will be available on April the 20th. So if you're wanting to get an affordable OnePlus, you might want to look at this. But at this point, if you want to go through the hassle and import from abroad, I might as well uh, suggest you to get the OnePlus 11R. That has, uh, that's got much better specs. And if you pay, obviously pay, you might have to pay double or triple to get it in. Uh, to import it, but it might be well worth the hassle in a way. Well, we're already talking about OnePlus Nord. Uh, OnePlus also showed off uh, another accessory to go with the phone, the OnePlus Nord Buds 2. Another product they showed off um, again yesterday in a way. Uh, these, the, uh, OnePlus obviously sells wireless earbuds under their own brand name, and also they've also been releasing the OnePlus Nord Buds. Um, and let's just say they're kind of popular and they're affordable. 
uh, like the World Phones itself. Uh, but the Nord Buds 2 is their newest uh, wireless earbuds. The price will definitely get you interested. It this these earbuds will cost set you back sixty dollars as it is, which is pretty cool in a way. Uh, what do you get for sixty bucks? You're probably wondering. Uh, so you get the same design like the original uh, in a way. It's um, as I said, and but now you get in two different colors, white or gray, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, other than that, really. In terms of battery life, you get five hours of playback time on the earbuds, and the charging case will give you up to 27 hours of battery life generally. Uh, so that's pretty cool in a way, and it just weighs 37.5 grams. We're talking about the carry, about the case itself. Uh, on top of that, you have IP55 water and dust resistance. Uh, Google Fast Pair is there if you use a newer Android phone. So that's pretty cool, but the really impressive part about the Buds, Nord Buds 2 that you definitely want to check out is the active noise cancellation. Now, uh, earbuds at this price, but more than starting over $50 to about $100 now, do offer uh, active noise cancellation or noise cancelling of some variety or form. But here uh, you get negative 25 decibels of ANC. Uh, that's definitely there. It's surprising to see it on a major brand uh, wireless here, but at this price point, about $60. Uh, you don't, as I said, you don't really see it on brand name earbuds. But if you go into the overall market, go on Lay Express, you may find some random, no name, as highly unknown uh, TWS earbuds that do offer this functionality. But this kind of feature would be available on earbuds over $100 with brand name. But this one is, as I said, around $60 to $70, which is surprising in a way. On top of everything, you have BaseWave uh, software functionality, uh, direct audio tuner, Dolby Atmos software support, again, on compatible devices, a 12.4 millimeter driver on the earbuds. So it's slightly better than the previous Nord Buds. It does kind of improve on some of the downsides of the OnePlus Nord Buds that were definitely there in a way if you really don't want to go onto aliexpress and you know buy a 50 dollar pair of wireless earbuds to get some mind-blowing sound quality or anything like that you definitely want to check out the nord buds too it's available for around 60 dollars in the us 70 dollars uh, 70 pounds in the uk um and we're available through oneplus and amazon and all the sort of online retailers later this april so that's pretty cool as i said if you have don't have a lot to spend on you have around 60 bucks and as I said, you don't want to scour Amazon or AliExpress. This is something worth checking out. Heck, I might would love to try these Nord Buds too. But yeah, we'll see about that. That's for sure. All right, on to our next new shiny gadget. Uh, Asus, which is known for gaming laptops and gaming phones to a degree, uh, have shown off a new product, a completely new product category that have never gone into. Gaming handhelds, specifically products like the Steam Deck and much, much more. And we've gotten the ROG Ally. Now, in case you missed it, it's not an April Fool's prank. It would have been the case, but no, this is an actual serious product that, you, that you'll be able to get down the road later, obviously, in a few months' time. We don't know much details about availability or pricing, but what we do know is that this is a pretty sick gaming handheld. To start with, you have a roughly 7-inch, 120 hertz FHD display, uh, which is pretty impressive for a handheld of this caliber. On top of that, uh, you re it was just 16 by 9 by the way, this is something I found out from the videos. I'll link them in the show notes so you can check them out when you have the time. Uh, on top of that, it's slightly lighter than the Steam Deck and is a little bit more narrow and compact. Uh, interesting enough, it runs on a custom AMD APU that means that it essentially, now we don't specifically know performance or frame rates, but this should do wonderfully fine for full HD gaming and be able to sort of stream from your gaming PC or from cloud streaming services without any difficulties and emulators would be a walk in the park. That's for sure. Uh, that's that's a given. Uh, but yeah, um, it was basically a AMD uh, APU running on RDNA 3 graphics and Zen 4 processors. So that's pretty cool in a way. And, um, but we really don't know much about the CPU cores of the overall GPU, but it is a custom APU from AMD. So that's pretty cool in a way. You get M.2 SSD storage. You have uh, ultra high capacity, uh, grade two micro SD card storage, 
on the device itself. So again, competing with the Steam Deck in terms of functionality. The M.2 uh, support means you can only get up to one terabyte of storage. So if you have a huge game library, you might as well want to look to external storage or things like that for this matter. Um, you might get, you potentially could get slightly better battery life than the Steam Deck. We don't know about the battery. I mean, in the videos, they didn't go into specifics in that sense. Uh, but yeah, the RG Alley also comes with, basically, it really is like a Steam Deck. Uh, there's no touch pads on it, uh, but you get a shoulder uh, pad, uh, back buttons, and as I said, uh, top triggers and back triggers too. So that's pretty cool in a way on top of dual joysticks. Uh, doesn't uh, The joysticks, by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, do not have Hall Effect, uh, so they might not be accurate for a lot of gamers, but yeah. And you also won't get Thunderbolt 4 expandability, so if that matters to you, then you might want to look at a gaming laptop at this point. Uh, but other than that, interestingly, the ROG Ally will allow you to access faster external graphics thanks to the ROG XG Mobile uh, accessory, which is from the gaming laptops and it what it what you do is you plug a slightly large cable into an external eGPU uh, in a way and you essentially get PCIe Gen 3 X8 speeds so you essentially get a mobile GPU where you get a boost in performance so that's significant in a way. The ROG Ally is essentially a promising gaming handheld it could really be the Steam Deck killer finally compared to so many options in the market so many different competing options um, and especially when you, the fact that you have a 120 hertz display, you got that combined AMD APU that apparently should be two times faster than the Steam Deck at 30 watt uh, power consumption, according to Linus Tech Tips, the man himself. Uh, that's his words, not mine. On top of that, you also have the capability for eGPU that you don't have on the Steam Deck. And as I said, you can also, as I said, expand the storage so that's significant in a way so this is shaping up to be one promising gaming handheld and um, you're probably thinking about price now but Asus has not given specific pricing or information on that some people have speculated that this RG ally could cost around six to eight hundred dollars uh, given the fact that you are getting the higher refresh rate display, the APU and things like that. So it'll be a little bit more expensive than the Steam Deck. Um, but then again, Steam is taking uh, a bit of a loss on this deck and they're making the money back in software sales. That's again, that's according to Dave Lee sort of. And I probably would agree with him too. So, our, the, so Asus could be selling this at a slightly higher price, but it'll probably be very, very good quality in a way so can't wait for this headset gg asus uh, really are um you know they really are doing some great things in a way I mean, we're already talking about asus and rg uh ivan blast aka ev leaks has released some new pictures purportedly showing the rg phone 7 pro and spoiler alert it's more or less the same uh, and i'm and i'm not trying to like cap it but i really mean it it's more or less the same it it, the design is nearly identical from the ROG Phone 6 from last year. Slightly, some bits and bobs there and there. The camera being now that we have a triple camera set up, there's sort of slightly bigger uh, camera bezel. But other than that, it's identical to last year. And that's all I've got to say, really, to be honest. But then again, can't wait for the ROG Phone 7. Another big Android phone that's going to be launching this month. So again, can't wait uh, for this phone in general. We're already talking about phones and devices and things like that. We got some new leaks and rumors and details about some scoop on on future Samsung devices. First up, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra, the next high-end tablet from Samsung. Ice Universe posted a bunch of specs about it on Twitter. Uh, firstly, uh, dimensions. Uh, so the S9 Ultra will essentially measure around 208.6 by 326.4 by 5.5 millimeters so like the previous high-end tablet on top of that you have a 14.6 inch uh, wqx ga plus display so that's 2960 by 1848 display an 11,200 million power battery 45 watt fast charging capability on top of that it will should weigh 737 grams ip68 water and dust resistance and here's the juicier part the snapdragon 8 gen 2 for galaxy 
on this device. It kind of makes sense. Like Samsung's kind of worked on the software and optimization. It just makes sense for them to ship a tablet foldables with that same processor and also volumes of scale, uh, you know, economies of scale. So it kind of makes sense. And also here's the other crazier part. The S9 Ultra tablet from Samsung will apparently come with 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM. And that's a huge amount of RAM. Uh, we there are MacBooks that don't offer 16 gigabytes of RAM straight away as base spec, and this could be on this tablet. So, pretty crazy if you ask me. But these are also speculation uh, until obviously the device is launched. We don't know uh, that. Uh, again, uh, my wants might want to take this, as I've said, with a grain of salt. We're already talking about uh, what could be coming in the new Samsung devices, the Z Flip 5 and Fold 5. We've kind of been talking about these foldables past couple of months. A uh, few more scoops kind of coming out there, left and right. Uh, the whole device is not really leaked, but the, as we get closer to August, it'll probably be leaked in full because Samsung probably has a poor track record of keeping a secret about our devices. Anyways, uh, according to Ross Young from Digital, uh, from Display, uh, from uh, DSCC, the consulting company, uh, behind digital displays according to him the z flip 5 could be coming in beige gray light green and light pink colors and the z fold 5 may be coming in pre in a more fancier beige black and light blue uh, but yeah apparently uh, these are going to be the main colors there's also going to be the customizable ones i'm just assuming given that samsung did that for the last foldable uh, phone uh, with different customizable uh, color options like they do so potentially some of these colors would only be available through Samsung's website, like the last foldable. So that's pretty interesting in a way. And last one before we move on, uh, we also have gotten essentially a concept photo of the Z Flip 5's hour display. And purportedly, it kind of essentially looks like it covers most of the outer top outer surface on the back um, and sort of bulges right around the cameras. Um, apparently, according to, to the person who leaked it, um, this would the display would apparent our display could apparently be around three to four inches. Now that's a significant size, uh, but hey, uh, that kind of looks to be exciting in a way. But as I said, like most things, as I've mentioned already, do take this with a pinch of salt, in a way. All right. Earlier today, a report came out from Insider Gaming, purportedly stating that Sony is working on a new device. And you're probably wondering what it is. Is it a new PS Vita or PSP? Spoiler alert, no, it's apparently a handheld that is designed for PS5 remote play, allowing you to essentially play games from your PS5 on a handheld, again, over Wi-Fi or cellular. So, uh, not cellular, but over Wi-Fi. You get what I'm talking about. It's pretty crazy uh, what we're hearing about. This device, codenamed Q-Lite, is essentially a 8-inch uh, device. It has an 8-inch display. Uh, it looks a lot. Earlier prototypes apparently look a lot like a PS5 controller. So you can, if you want to imagine, I have a. If you're watching the clip, you, you see the concept above a mock-up I've made. Uh, what I would assume would be that just that. But basically, you take the Backbone One uh, controller uh, that already came out a few months back, and you slap in a big 8-inch display, and this is what you get with uh, with this Q Lite device. But apparently, it's already in QA testing this means it's probably going to be coming uh, before the ps5 pro and right after the ps5 with a detachable d blu-ray disc drive which is pretty interesting in a way that kind of means that we might see it later this year or early next year in a way it's pretty crazy huh that sony is apparently working on a handheld but this is only for remote play i don't know about you i'm kind of torn to be frank uh sony to be fair has the resources and the development teams to build a handheld gaming console to make games for it but i'm sure that the ps4 and 5 are already hot kick uh, sell like hot kicks that they don't really need to build a dedicated handheld um, at this point you might as well utilize remote play which takes advantage of the full horsepower of the ps5 as it's a pretty beefy games console and now it's starting to be available more widely so kind of makes sense to offer a handheld but at this point you might as well download the remote play app on your phone, connect to the PS5 and play games off your phone, essentially doing in-home streaming. So this is a highly unnecessary device. It kind of reminds me of Xbox's like cloud gaming only box that they invented, but they have not released it. Obviously it got shelved because 
the series S and X like was in incredible demand that they shelved plans for that um, uh, like light device kind of. So this sounds like an unnecessary piece of hardware. Kind of, it's right up there with the revisions of the PS Vita. And uh, if you remember very well, the PS Vita TV, which was like a very useless device. I mean, uh, but hey, they're trying to make one. So, but at this point, I feel that what Sony sh could and should do is offer a 5G Xperia phone that also has uh, that has a PS5 controller slapped around it. Again, like the mock-up I have, if you're seeing the clip uh, on my social, sort of. Um, it would kind of make sense. And also then the device would be more useful than just connecting to your PS5 and playing games off it. You could stream over the internet and things like that. But yeah, I mean, um, it, it looks like an interesting concept. But honestly, this looks like a pretty useless device. Um, I don't know what which kind of person would buy this. As, as I said, as I said, at this point... They might as well make a dedicated handheld or really just make a better Xperia phone uh, that d happens to do remote play with a bit more optimization software-wise. Uh, as I said, uh, more useful is basically the PS5 with a detachable disk drive. That one would probably sell definitely like hotcakes. I could see myself getting that if I had the money, frankly. But um, yeah. This uh, PS5 Q Lite thing sounds interesting to me, but um, yeah, I feel like Sony should make a proper handheld once again, don't you think? Uh, what What are your thoughts? Let me know. Uh, all the contact details are in the show notes. So yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, rumor nonetheless. And finally, an Apple rumor you definitely want to hear. And uh, not so good news for those who have older Apple devices. So WWDC is, in a, in, is probably in over a t month or two's time. And we're getting some more information about the upcoming version of iOS and iPadOS. And um, here's the shocker here. According to a user on Twitter, iOS 17 and iPadOS 17 will not be available for users of the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, the iPhone X, the first gen iPad Pro 9.7 and 12.9 inch, and the fifth gen iPad, according to FameG Monster on Twitter, who apparently says that, uh, who's claiming that uh, Apple will not be offering the late, the upcoming version of iOS and iPadOS for these devices that I've mentioned earlier. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Now, that kind of means that uh, it'll be uh, iOS 17 and the iPad equivalent will be incompatible uh, with devices that run the AI11 Bionic or much older chips than that. Uh, interestingly enough, um, but uh, there are going to be notable exceptions like the 6th and 7th gen iPads and the 2nd gen iPad Pros potentially. But apparently this is because of a boot ROM security vulnerability that Apple can't really patch with an update. So that's pretty interesting in a way. If you have these devices now, do keep them using uh, because, um, fun fact, I have an iPad Air 2 and although I didn't get iOS 16 or iPad OS 16 by the way, it still runs like a champ, to be fair. It runs all the kind of apps. So it should last you a few more years. But if you want to upgrade, now is your call. This is your sign, basically, to run out and get a new Apple device. Because uh, that's the real kicker. Like, once you uh, are kind of behind on software, it's a real reason to upgrade to a new Apple device. But yeah, um, as I said, let's see uh, during the WWDC keynote uh, what devices will be supported on the upcoming version of iOS and iPad OS, that is. All right, this leads us to the end of this week's episode. What do you think of everything you've heard today so far? The OnePlus phones, the ROG Ally, the, the potentially rumored PS5 remote play handheld. That's not really a handheld, but really a way to play your PS5 games from anywhere. Let me know. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at said underscore my nine nine. Follow me there if you can. Send me a message. I'll be happy to talk back to you. And yeah, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss the next episode. Uh, leave a review on Apple. Uh, share this to your friends and family. And yeah, till next week, this is your boy Mountain signing out. Wherever you are, whatever you're up to, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend ahead. And yeah, uh, that's it. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you again, hopefully, with another episode of Mountain's Gather Talk. All right? Uh, take care. And thank you for listening. Ciao.